Hi, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves in Tweed and welcome to another tea session. Today I was inspired by my friend Jan over at Tea with Jan, whose channel I'll link below, who recently started doing her matcha basics. So I thought I would do my own version of matcha basics, starting with how I make a bowl of matcha. Now, this was also inspired by the fact that I got this brand new gorgeous bowl, which I'm using as a matcha bowl, from Mucky Paws Ceramics in the UK. And I also decided that it was time to pick up a new matcha whisk. This is the whisk that is used for traditional style matcha. It's also called a shasen in Japanese. And when you first get it, you have to kind of prepare it a little bit. So I thought I would go through those steps and go through the steps that I take when I just make a bowl of matcha for a daily bowl without trying to go through any kind of tea ceremony or historical context. So let's brew. <laughs> so here we have our whisk. And the first thing you notice when you take it out of the container is that the little tines are all kind of curled up. And this isn't actually the way you want them to be when you whisk your matcha. So the first time you use a whisk, what you need to do is kind of soak it in some hot water to let these loosen up and uncurl. So I've got my water here. And I'm just going to put some water into my bowl. and just set my whisk in the bowl and let it soak for a little bit. And I think while that's soaking, I'll go through the tools that I use for daily matcha. So obviously I need my whisk and my bowl. This is actually just a regular bowl uh, made handmade by a ceramic ceramics artist. You can get special bowls that are called matcha bowls. They tend to be a little bit wider and have kind of a wider bottom to give you room to do the whisking. Um, so the other tools that I use are, I do sift my matcha, um, and I use a traditional bamboo scoop. You can also use a quarter teaspoon in place of the bamboo scoop to measure your matcha. Obviously I have my matcha. This is the Chiron Harvest from Naoki Matcha that I tasted previously. And then the other thing that I use is I have a little cup that I use to measure my water because having the right ratio of water to powder is one of the easiest ways to make sure your matcha is going to whisk up nicely. So now I think my whisk has been in the hot water for long enough that you can see that the tines have uncurled and it's ready for use. So the other tool that I have is this matcha whisk holder and this holds the whisk and helps keep it in shape while keeping it upside down so that the water drains away from the whisk and not into the handle where it can cause mold. So now I have a waste bowl. I'll pour that water out. And now it's time to make our matcha. So what I do is I put my sifter over the bowl. Take my matcha. And I do two scoops into my sifter. And there's little green fingerprints on everything. Then I sift this in. I push it through. And then I take my hot water and I measure out 60 milliliters of hot water and pour that in. And you just kind of whisk, whisk, whisk. You want to be gentle. You don't want to push on the bottom of the bowl because that can damage your whisk. It's kind of all in the wrist, although having a good quality matcha and the right ratio of powder to 
uh, water will help you get a good froth. And you just kind of whisk it until it's frothy enough for you. This is pretty good. It's got some big bubbles. I'm not an expert matcha whisker, but here we have our bowl of matcha. Now, traditionally matcha is drunk in three sips and you usually have a little sweet with it, but sometimes in the mornings I make myself a bowl of matcha on an empty stomach. I really like this Kyron Harvest matcha. It has almost a sweet taste to it and it's very rich and kind of creamy buttery. Makes a wonderful daily matcha. So a little about this bowl. I ordered this bowl off Instagram when the artist at Mucky Paws Ceramics was having kind of a studio clean out and was trying to just get rid of things. And I saw this bowl and I thought that it was black in the picture. And when it arrived, it's this beautiful brown and purple color, which purple is my favorite color. So I was so pleasantly surprised by the difference in color and it's just so beautifully made. So I'm going to put a link to Monkey Paws Ceramics in the information box below. It's just, it's got this incredibly thin rim, which is very unusual in hand-thrown pottery and everything is just very well finished. I know enough about pottery and throwing to know that it's very difficult to make a bowl this nice. Not that I could ever do it myself. So now I've finished my bowl of matcha and this isn't the end of our tea session because for me personally, maybe this is the Zen Buddhist remnants in me. When I make a bowl of matcha, I don't consider the session complete until I've cleaned up, which would of course just completely floor my husband to hear because I never clean up after myself. But for my matcha bowl and my matcha whisk, it's really important to take care of your tools and wash your bowl. So first I take a little bit of the warm water from the kettle and just kind of rinse my bowl out. And then you wanna rinse the matcha off your whisk. So it's kind of like doing the prep work in reverse, um, except when I first start out when it's not a brand new whisk, instead of soaking it in the water for a while, I just kind of swish the whisk in the water to kind of moisten it up. And then I put it on my whisk holder to keep its shape. And then use a little napkin to get any of the remnants out and this makes everything nice and clean and ready for the next time. And then I also like to wipe the matcha powder off my scoop and I will sometimes kind of wipe the inside of my sifter. Although I pretty much only use this for matcha so I don't always take too much care to get every little scrap of matcha out of it. And you can see I like to use this green napkin because the matcha stains aren't as obvious. And then I have to put everything away. So thank you for joining me for my Matcha Basics tea session. I hope you found this useful and definitely leave me a comment if you have any questions or any other things you'd like me to share with you about my matcha habits. Um, and yeah, definitely check out Tea with Jan because she posts a lot more often than I do and she's just fantastic. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me. I hope I see you again sometime. Bye.